Oh, hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to be with you this morning on this Thursday, March 18th. Uh, kind of a windy, uh, rainy day, uh, but good to be uh, good to be with you this morning. Um, we'll wait for our population to feed, our, our feed to populate, and um, see if we can get some folks joining us. I think I've got some folks on the phone as well this morning. And hi, Lou. Morning, Julie. Hey, Joe. <laughs> I have to chuckle from last night uh, <laughs> when I see Joe's name. Uh, <laughs> Good to be with you all. Uh, I got some other folks hidden back there. Hot morning, Lisa. How are you? Um, hi, Sue. Nice to be with you this morning. Uh, glad you're with us. Um, hope you had a good evening last night. It was kind of a night to stay in. Morning, Michelle and Tom. Uh, nice to nice to have you here this morning. Uh, stop it, Joe. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Um, I'm just chuckling to myself. Uh, so good, good to be with you all this morning. Uh, we continue our look at the book of Romans, uh, Paul's powerful treatise uh, to the church at Rome, uh, Jewish Roman uh, Christians, um, as, he, as he writes to them, really a deep theological kind of... Uh, Offering, if you will, of, of God's grace and mercy uh, revealed in Christ Jesus. Um, really powerful stuff that, that Paul writes. Um, and I think it's, it's still so relevant for us uh, today as, uh, as we seek to, to find our, our place uh, in the family of God, as we seek to understand and grow in our walk with with Jesus, uh, this abundant life that, that God wants for us. And kind of need to be reminded of it over and over again. Um, and I think uh, today uh, we, we see that played out um, in the book of Romans, um, that we are people who are uh, alive, uh, alive in, in Christ. Uh, and we're getting ready to celebrate Easter. Uh, we know what sin does to us. Uh, we know that's the sin that in our lives the damage and the destruction that it brings, uh, but we also know the life that Christ uh, brings, and we are looking forward to really celebrating uh, Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what that means uh, for for us. Well, a couple of verses for us this morning, uh, kind of direct our way, if you will, um, in 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 how we how we seek to be people who are following Jesus together. Uh, the first one comes from Proverbs uh, 16, verse 9. Uh, the human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. Uh, the human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. Uh, I know another way of, of saying that is, you know, uh, <laughs> we plan, but God redirects, replans. Uh, you know, uh, we, we think we know what's going to go on and we're, we're in control, uh, but the Lord is the one who ultimately directs our steps. Uh, and then from 2 Corinthians 3, 5, it says, Not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our competency is from God. Our competency is from God. And as I, I read those uh, this morning, one of the things that kind of grabbed my attention was this idea of uh, nobody likes to be lost, right? Um, and yet we, we often find ourselves uh, lost trying to figure out the world in which we live, uh, it seems very confusing, uncertain, difficult. Uh, we see people around us who are lost, looking for direction, for guidance, and trying all kinds of, of, of things uh, to fill their lives up with. And maybe we've been in that same place. We've tried to fill our lives up on the things of this world and have discovered we've, we've only come up empty. And so these, these words of, of, of Scripture this morning are, are really valuable for us, uh, that we are called to be people walking in the way of, of the Lord. Uh, you know, His, His ways for our, our lives. Uh, he is the one who, who gives us competency. He is the one who enables us to really live the life that, that uh, we so long for. 
um, that our world so longs for. Something that brings us fulfillment and purpose. Something that, uh, that has meaning. Uh, something that, uh, you know, is, is worth it. <laughs> I mean, we see it all around. People looking for something to fill the void in their life. People are, are lost. Um, and, and I don't know, there's some kind of, maybe some fascination with zombies because that's the way it seems like so many in our world live or feel like they're living, just empty, looking for something. Well, today we discover that, that we have a God who shows us the way of, of freedom, uh, shows us the way of freedom, the way of, of life as we are joined uh, to Jesus, the one who gives us life, the one who overcame death and the grave. The last enemy is death, and Jesus overcame that for us, so that we can be people who are walking competently, uh, walking with the mind of, of Christ, right? Uh, because he, as he said, he has come to give life and give it abundantly. He wants that for us and so while uh, we can walk in a new way with the mind of, of Christ, no longer slaves in captivity to sin, uh, but free, free in Christ. And that's really what Paul is, is telling the Romans here. And he's telling us we can walk in a new way because we're, no we're no longer slaves to sin. We now have the mind and heart and competency of of Christ. So let me read for you today. We are in Romans chapter 6 verses 5 through 16. Romans 6, 5 through 16. And you remember Paul uh, speaks and writes in a way uh, that would have been uh, appealing to the Eastern kind of mind. Uh, there's kind of this around and around and touching on the topic and then looking at the topic from a little bit different angle, a little different perspective, trying to get his point across. And so he says it in different kinds of ways. And we may say, well, we've heard this before, but what Paul is, is doing is, is, is trying to, like, it's like a diamond and looking at it from a different facet so that we can grab and, and maybe get something out of it. So it, it applies and appeals to, to us in the way that, that we think. So from uh, verse 5, chapter 6 of Romans, verse 5 through 16, it says, If we have been united with him like this in his death, that's Jesus' death, if we have been united with Jesus like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with Jesus in his resurrection. So he was just talking about baptism, how we were joined to Jesus' death and Resurrection. So in our baptism, God joins us to him. We saw it on Sunday, the mark of the, the cross upon the forehead and the heart to mark us as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. God puts his name on us and we are in a miraculous way joined to Jesus' death and resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with Jesus so that the body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set freed from sin. All right? Paul is saying here, because we're joined to Christ's crucifixion, we have died to sin. We're no longer slaves to sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has, has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Okay, so Jesus died and he rose again. He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. Now he lives, and the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, in the same way as those who are joined to Jesus, in our baptism, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Right? We are dead to sin. And Paul talked about it. 
Do we go on sinning then? No, we're dead to it. We're, it's like we've left the country. We don't go back. We're dead. We have died to sin, and we are now alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Don't be mastered by sin anymore, because you're not under the law. You are under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So what Paul is saying here is, okay, we've been set free. We can walk in a new way. We are no longer slaves to sin. We can walk in the way of Christ. So we're not going to go back. <laughs> we're not going to go back to our old slavery to sin and death. Why in the world would we do something like that? But here's the key, and I think this is important for today for us so that we can grab a hold of and take with us. We are all slaves to something. We're all slaves to something. Money, sex, uh, you know, a job, whatever it may be. Um, and that's what Paul's saying here. You're, you're a slave to something. But as those who have been redeemed in Christ, be a slave to Christ. No longer sin, no longer slaves to sin, but slaves to Christ. With people who walk in the way of Christ, who have the mind of Christ, because in, we are competent to do that, not of our own doing, not that we have competence of ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, our competence is from God, and he wants to direct us in a new way. He doesn't want us lost and empty, he wants to fill us with purpose and meaning, and that meaning comes when we fill ourselves up with the minds of Christ, when we are slaves to Christ. And so we offer ourselves again today, um, right, we offer ourselves up as slaves, as, as servants of, of Christ. Not to the law, but to grace. We're not under the law anymore. We are under grace, and so we seek to live under that grace. And we find our competence is from God and not from us to do that. And so we pray the Holy Spirit would fill us with his Spirit. Fill us so that we can live with that competence, so that we can live as people under grace, slaves to righteousness as we seek the mind of Christ to do what is right. Now Paul will go on in Romans to talk about the battle, the struggle that is. Uh, but that's what we seek to do as people who have been joined to Christ. We're not lost people anymore. We have purpose. We have meaning. We have the abundant life that God wants for us today and for all of eternity because Christ no longer has or death no longer sin and death no longer have mastery over us we've been set free as people who are joined to Jesus all right um, so be a slave a servant to righteousness a servant to Christ uh, today a couple of things, important things coming up uh, this Saturday, 4.30 to 6, our Easter for our community event. We're excited about that. We're just grateful it's not today, uh, but uh, Saturday looks like 57 and sunny, and so we're excited about that. Uh, share, this, share this with your neighbors. Um, uh, sh share this uh, with your friends that they can come and drive by. We're just praying that that uh, it would impact people with the real meaning of Easter. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that because Jesus died and rose again, we have been given new life, and we have direction and meaning and purpose. We're not walking 
in, in the living zombies. No, we're, we're people with meaning and purpose. Uh, that is Saturday from 4, 30 to 6. Um, and then uh, there will be no church. And then church uh, uh, Sunday morning at 10, 10. Um, I'm getting ready for Holy Week. Excited about that. Uh, as, as we uh, have the opportunity to really celebrate uh, Easter uh, this, this year. Um, let me do a few prayers here this morning. Uh, we're, we're grateful uh, for all the uh, uh, goodness of God in these days, uh, that He is faithful, and uh, you know uh, that we can follow, uh, follow Him. Lord, uh, today we, we come to you uh, grateful. Uh, for your goodness and your mercy to us, uh, that in our baptism we have been joined to Jesus, to his death and resurrection, and we are no longer slaves to sin and death, but slaves to you, Lord, servants of righteousness, as we seek to walk in a new direction, uh, as, as people with a purpose and meaning. Uh, Lord, uh, as we seek to be with Jesus, help us to be like Jesus. Uh, we know that when we're around people, we're influenced by them, and we want to be around Jesus so we can be influenced by him. And live as, as he lived. Uh, Lord, as we take up those habits uh, that Jesus uh, practiced throughout his earthly life. Uh, and help us to, to, to be those pe people who, follow, uh, who are following Jesus together. Today, Lord, we say prayers of thanksgiving. We pray for prayers of, for Laura, uh, Allison's sister-in-law, who has come home from the hospital. And we're just grateful. We're so grateful to hear uh, that from Allison last night. Uh, we just pray for her and all who are dealing with the long haul of COVID. Um, certainly people and families have been affected in, in really tremendous ways, Lord. Um, and we just ask that you would walk with them in this journey. Uh, we're grateful, Lord, that we see some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we just pray for, for wisdom um, and common sense as we, as we move out of uh, this phase and, and can begin this process of reopening, uh, Lord, um, and just ask uh, that that would go smoothly, and that that you would have been at, that you are at work, Lord, that we would begin to see the fruit of you, you at work while things seemed silent, um, that you have been working in people's hearts and lives. Help us to be aware and open to that, um, to the people that you bring into our lives, Lord, and see them as people of peace and people uh, that you have given us an opportunity to share our lives with uh, so that we can share the gospel, the good news. Uh, Lord, uh, today uh, we pray for those who are sick, recovering, um, dealing with stressors and difficulties in their lives, Lord, dealing with depression and anxiety, fears, Lord. Uh, help us to know that you've got us, uh, that we're in your hands, and that we, we need not live in fear. Uh, but that you are a heavenly Father who loves us and who's got this, uh, who, who's got us, and we're so grateful uh, for that. For nothing can separate us uh, from the love that you have for us in Christ Jesus. Nothing uh, that this world can throw at us. Uh, enable us to live as those people, Lord. We ask your blessing on our event for Saturday, uh, that the gospel message, the good news, may we be proclaimed and, and heard and received and lived out. Uh, Lord, uh, bless our church and um, the opportunity you have given us uh, to serve our community, to serve others uh, with, in your name. Uh, and we pray all of this now in, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, uh, have, have a good day. Look forward to seeing you this weekend. Really excited about it. Uh, have, have a great day and, and God's blessings to you all. Bye-bye.